Um, so outside of that, obviously, you know, you love getting on stage, you love performing, mm -hmm. you're an adventurous guy. What are some of the most adventurous things you've done outside of music in, in your free time? The most adventurous thing I've ever done. So this was the summer after, summer after my freshman year of college. Um, I was working at a day camp. There's like two weeks left and an old friend from middle school, he's like, yo, I'm coming to town today. I want to see you. And I was like, okay, pull up comes to my house and he's like, all right, let's go to these people's house. And I haven't hung out with these specific people in a long time, but we go. Then we're there, we're outside, we're in front of this campfire and he's like, guys, the lunar eclipse <laughs> is next week. Would you want to go? And I was like, yeah, let's just do it. Why? So, <laughs> why not? I've never seen anyone get hyped about the lunar eclipse. Just to do it, just to like experience something like, you know, just to be spontaneous. Yeah. And we all quit our jobs. I had like three weeks left, so it was like whatever. But like we all quit our jobs and no, just, no notice. Just no there. notice. All just right. like hey, we're gonna be gone, and just went. And it was one of the best trips and times I ever had. We drove like way too many um, miles there and back. We drove from New Jersey all the way to like. Nashville, Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois to see the eclipse. And it was two, three day trip. Damn. And it was so much fun. Okay, so it was worth it? Oh, it was totally to worth it. To see the lunar eclipse? Eclipse was cool, <laughs> but it was more about the journey. And I think that's- yeah, It's like an excuse for a trip. Yeah, it's an excuse for a trip. And I think a lot of people don't remember, it's all about the journey. It is not about the destination. Destination mm -hmm. was cool. We were in one of the spots where you could fully see the eclipse. And it was one of the coolest things I'd ever experienced. But mm -hmm. what really stuck with me was the friendships I got to nurture during the trip, just the joy that I felt during the trip, and yeah. how much fun I had. Is that kind of the same way you approach your music career? Yeah, you know, I've come really far from where I started. I'm very happy with where I am, and I'm very excited to go further. But the biggest thing for me is the journey and the work I'm putting in. Mm -hmm. I have so much joy working my ass off. You know, it's, it's hard and sometimes I don't feel great, but at the end of the day, I get to do what I love for a living and it will never get old. Yeah. What's your favorite part of the process? I love creating music. There is like, being on stage is awesome. There is so much um, joy and energy you get. I love expelling energy and pushing it to people and seeing them bring it back. but. When I'm making a song and everything just works, everything comes together, mm -hmm. there is no better feeling than creating something that not only brings you joy, but that you hope will bring joy or a feeling to someone else. Yeah, like when you, when you make that song and you know it's, you know people are gonna go crazy for it. There's just like a moment when you're making and you're like, oh yeah, this is, this is it. Yeah, so I'm Martin. Uh, I'm an artist, songwriter, producer, DJ, and just lover of art and anything creative. Music is one of the most important things in my life. Um, even when things weren't good, you know, music was something I could use as solace and as protection. And whether I'm not even making or playing music, um, Music has been something that I've always been able to find, like just playing stuff, discovering new artists. It's something that's not just work to me, it's a passion and something that I do in a lot of my free time. But besides that, I love to play basketball. I love to play soccer. Those are like two passions of mine. You know, they don't make it as close to music, but they are something that I take a lot of joy in and that I really love. Obviously you're here because you're incredibly talented. So why don't you tell us about your journey into the world of DJing, what got you started? DJing was a something that really came to me. Um, the first time I ever went to a club, I was 14, and I, it was my first time getting introduced to electronic music, and it was my first time getting introduced to the art of DJing. And I remember I was at that first event, and I was like, this is something I have to do. 
It's something I have to learn to do. It's something I want to do at the best possible level I could. Um, Damn. My mom would not have let me go to a club at 14. You know, I'm pretty sure my parents argued about letting me go anywhere. So <laughs> it's the same thing. I got yeah. lucky. Very supportive parents. I'm very lucky. Damn. So been listening to music your whole life, obviously, it sounds like. What's really one of those first songs that like you had this strong emotional connection to that really brought started your love of music? I don't know if it's an emotional connection, but um, the earliest memory of music for me was two years old in the minivan singing songs at the top of my lungs. Um, there was one song on the radio in particular, um, Wild Wild West by Will Smith, and apparently, this is according to my mom, uh, I'd request it. <laughs> so much so that, you know, she had to go out and find the CD. You know, we don't have to do that anymore. But <laughs> at the time, she's aging like, yourself with that like, one. Yeah, so she went out, found the CD, and would play it back and back and back for me. What do you think of the direction the music industry is going now? Is there anything you want to change? The industry is in a very interesting place. Um, things are becoming more independent because of how easy it is to access other people. Through social media, through streaming, it's really interesting because it's going back to the creators more and more. Yeah. Um, there's an artist I really love and he recently dropped an app and he's putting out all the music on the app that he's not putting on stream. He's putting out merch exclusively on this app. And it's a way that he can interact with those super fans and keep them in the ecosystem. I think it's absolutely incredible. Yeah, game the system. Yeah. Who who is it? Uh, Toby Lou. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know he was doing all that. Yeah, so he has an app called Toby Loop, and it is insane. It is genius. It is the best way to keep your fan base. You know, people say that you shouldn't fully rely on any of these social medias or anything. Because what if one day they just take away your account? What if one day they just, you know, block you from reaching everyone? Then yeah. you're screwed. That's why there's such an importance on email lists, such importance on all these other ways that you connect with people. Mm -hmm. And having your own app, it's like almost a direct line to someone's phone that they can check on what you're putting out all the time. Yeah, you see yourself taking a similar route? I really think, trying to stand out by yourself? Yeah, I think there's going to be a point where I do that. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's time to maybe learn a little bit more about you kind of in some, in some random ways. Okay. Like if you wanted to, if you could go anywhere, anytime, mm -hmm. where are you going and why? Okay, I have two. All right. One, go to the start of hip hop in the late 70s in New York, or go to Chicago when House was coming out of there. Interesting. Okay, so stays in music. Yeah, 100%. All uh, right, you have to choose one. I think I would go the Cool Herc party. Okay, what are you doing? Just dancing, vibing? Uh, just taking it all in. Okay. I, 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 like, I'd like to say I'd dance, but I think I would just witness it all happen, you know? The first time someone used a break beat, and like, there's so much culture there that has now become something way bigger than itself and it's so cool that it happened in such a small area yeah i mean it's still new york but you know <laughs> yeah i mean that would have been super cool to see mm -hmm. i for sure would have said i'd go watch the pyramids be built but i like your answer wow. better that's a good one yeah yeah gotta know who did that <laughs> um it, it's gotta be it's gotta be but i guess kind of pivoting the conversation to more deeply who you are mm -hmm. on a deeper level what would you say about what guides you, not just in music, but in your life? Your life philosophy that, you know, kind of defines who you are. There's two things that guide me. One is my family. My mm -hmm. family is the most important thing to me. And I will always do anything for my family and my close friends who I also consider family. Yeah. Number two, there is a saying. When I was around 18, Someone said something to me that really stuck out to me. Um, they said that my humor, my kindness, 
and my persistence were the things that, you know, kept them close to me, kept them, you know, whatever it may be. And I've really took those words to heart. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I've always moved, but it's how I want to continue to move. No matter where I am, no matter who I'm dealing with, no matter what the situation is, I want to go into everything with humor, kindness, and persistence. Mm -hmm. I want to make every person laugh. I want to be kind to everyone. I want to be respectful to every person. And yeah. most importantly, I want to be consistent in my work. I want to be consistent with people. I want to be consistent and intentional with everything I do. And so humor, kindness, and persistence is the biggest thing for me. All right, that's a good big three. That's the Braun, Wade, and Bosch of life values right there. <laughs> I love that. It might be. <laughs> yeah, so are there any specific places that hold important value to you? I think one of the biggest places that holds a lot of importance to me would be the city of Chicago. I'm originally from Chicago. I moved away when I was very young. Um, mm -hmm. But it just, every time I go back to that city, I feel like I'm at peace, I feel like I'm at home. Uh, you know, my dad was born and raised there in the south side of the city. And I think maybe part of that is just like put into me but I, every time I'm there, it feels like I'm home. And yeah. when did you move away from special. Chicago? Um, so I moved away from Illinois when I was 10. To where? Uh, Oregon. Damn. Very uh, interesting move. Very weird transition. Yeah. What did um, you think of Oregon? It was different. Um, quieter. Okay. Um, I lived there for two years. And okay. It was yeah. Like, different. how would you capture the Oregon experience? A very small town. Okay. Um, I was actually one of the bigger towns in Oregon, but it was still like everyone knows everyone. Yeah. And it was interesting because I don't know. It's it's not like anything else I've experienced. I've I moved a couple times, and so one big thing I've gained from moving is you know everyone is very different. There's so much nuance in perspectives in the world, and to expect everyone to be the same or act the same is silly, to be frank. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I remember I got to college and a lot of people were like, oh, well, this person like has acting weird, da 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 da. And I'm like, well, they're from somewhere else, so they probably just like do this a certain way. And it's it's odd when people like you will call someone out for doing something, and it's like it's not actually wrong. It's just not the way you're used to or you grew up doing. Yeah. So I'm very open and like very accepting of like different people, cultures and everything because of those moves. Who would you say the most important person in your life is right now? The most important person in my life is my mother. Uh, my mom is one of the kindest and most hardworking people you will ever meet. You know, growing up, my mom was just always there for me, always like vigilant and making sure that I was happy and taken care of. And you know, I remember all the time, like random people would just be like, or like her friends, like people she works with, et cetera, et cetera. And just be like, you know you have the best mom ever? Your mom is an amazing person. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. But truly, she is so kind. She is so hardworking. And every single person sees that. Everyone, she keeps giving and giving and giving. And that is someone I try to model after. I want to make sure that at every given moment, I am just giving my all giving my best and being the best possible human being I can. Yeah. yeah, it looks like you had a good role model growing up. Yeah. And now that we're running out of time, what's the you know the last thing you want to leave the audience with? Yo, what's good guys? It's Martin, the Renaissance Man. We just finished the interview. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you liked what you heard. If you didn't, it's okay. I'll cry when I get home, but that doesn't matter right now. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Make sure to drink some water, have veggies every day. And if you don't, you know, I'm not your parent. So like, just do what you gotta do. But thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day.